Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Year in Perfume and we're going to jump to the 1990s. So I'm very sad that the 80s are gone to be honest with you because it's my favorite decade in perfumery. Uh, however, I must say that looking at the list from the, 19, from the year 1990, it isn't as maybe large. I don't have as many fragrances, but there is still some amazing fragrances and some of um, maybe one or two of what some people consider their favorite fragrances of all time. Some of the noses that I follow that I consider, um, you know, worthy of attention and acclaim, uh, consider a couple of these from the list, some of the greatest fragrances of all time. So there's some bangers here. There's also some that are going to be under the radar and I have a bonus unboxing for you. Um, so, Let's let's get on with the show. Let's let's talk about the year 1990. Now, I was 5 in 1990. Also, my sister was born. And um so it is kind of, you know, when you're a kid, it's 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 almost like you remember those long summer days that stretch out forever and you would just play with your friends and never worry about anything and you know, it was a very happy time for me. Um and um uh, but a lot of things were happening in the world as well. Germany was reunified um, the Human Genome Project was officially started. I think they finished that in about 2003. Also, Hubble Space Telescope got launched. Um, so a lot of things were going on, but there's a couple, um, one song and one movie that, as a kid, just, um, really encapsulates the year 1990. It's Ice Ice Baby in song. And it's Home Alone in, in movie for me as a kid. Those two. And also um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. That was a uh, that was a big movie that Vanilla Ice was actually in. Uh, I remember playing, being a little kid, and um, playing that cassette tape of Ice Ice Baby over and over and over and over till my dad just finally lost it and told me to stop that or he's going to kick me out of the house. Um... So 1990, happy time for me as a kid, of course. I didn't know about any of these awesome fragrances back then. Um, but before we get into the list, let's do what we always do, and let's do scent of the day. And even though it's um, March 8th here in, in Texas, um, we almost got snow today, which is very rare, very late in the year. It, it didn't get cold enough, and it didn't, um, it honestly didn't rain enough to, to make it snow. Um... But uh, we, we came very close, and so I wore, trying to get my cold weather, you know, trying to get the, uh, the urge to wear some of these heavier fragrances off my, off, off my back here. So what I wore is I wore this, Feeling Aguil from uh, Serge Luton's, and I'll tell you what, I looked on eBay just out of curiosity, um, and there were... Two sellers selling this vintage bottle of Fila Nagil, both 50 ml. One is like mine with the Serge Luton's logo. And another one is the vintage uh, uh, Palais Royale version. Uh, and the Palais Royale, they wanted $900. Um, the version that I have, they wanted $500. So prices of some of these vintage fragrances are absolutely nuts. Um, I'm going to give myself a couple sprays in honor of having this bottle and seeing those prices. My God, I was talking to Rich Mitch today and we were talking about the fact that with perfume prices doing what they're doing, it would be impossible to build a collection um, nowadays. And luckily I found this partial bottle for a good price, what what I thought was expensive, but actually turned out to be a good price. Um, so don't pay that. I mean, even though this is a fantastic fragrance, it smells like you're standing. It's a Christopher Shell Drake. I think this came out in 2009, and it's basically this um, pine stone needle type smell with vetiver, laurels. Um, there's some fruitiness. Uh, there's frankincense. Smells like beautiful, like coniferous, um, you know, almost like a uh, incense-y, um, like an incense -y forest 
pine forest, like you put your hand in the tree sap, you know, and it got all sticky. And then you, you lit the um, sap on fire, but also you can smell what's around the forest. You can smell the fresh air uh, in the sky while you're standing out in the forest. It's absolutely beautiful. One of Christopher Sheldrake's masterpiece. I can see why people are paying crazy prices for this, but don't do it. I mean, it's not worth it. It's not worth $1,000 almost for, for a 50 ml bottle. That's just larceny. Um, it's supply and demand, but still, it's larceny. Okay, so let's get to the fragrances from 1990. We're going to start with a little 25 ml bottle. I actually have the uh, dry down here. Um, oh, it's so good. If you like, um, I recommended a fragrance to you guys in one of my other videos called Businessman. And I believe the house was Panage. Um, you have to check this out. This is uh, Trussardi Action. Uh, the original action, not action sport. This is the original action. And this is a little 25 ml bottle that I scored from, I want to say Le Parfumé. I think it was Le Parfumé uh, before they really went crazy on their prices. Um, and this is this is an aromatic fougere. That's why I said if you liked my recommendation of businessman, you have to get your nose on Trussardi action. Um, it's aromatic. It's fresh. It's spicy. It's green. It's there's beautiful lavender note listed. There's mint. Someone asked me about mint the other day. Who was that? I'll have to look that person up. Uh, in my comments, someone asked me about mint fragrances. This has to go on the list. It's minty, galbanum, and artemisia, like the holy trifecta of greenness in the opening. With uh, rosemary, lavender, juniper, coriander, and then the base is beautiful old school oak moss with musk. The musk reminds me of Businessman. I said there's, uh, I thought there was nitro musks in that fragrance. This is 1990, so there can't be nitro musks, but um, it is, you know, I wish I had a larger bottle than this little 25 ml travel spray, but just very happy to, to even get to experience this. It was unsprayed when I got it, and so there's probably 24 ml worth of juice left or something. I think I wore it to bed once, but it is absolutely beautiful. Um... Trussardi Action, if you like these kind of fragrances. A real hidden gem. Very green. Very aromatic. I'm um, going to get a lot of wear in the summer for me this year. Okay, now we're going to go to another summer banger. And this came out in 1990. Of course, it wouldn't be on the list. I'll keep saying it, so just get used to it. Um, and this is Cheruti 1881 for Men. Now, if you like fragrances like Creed's Royal Water, which I do, I love that fragrance in the summer, you have to try this. And this is a new formula, I want to say. I don't think this is a vintage. Yeah, distributed by Coty. They've done a very good job keeping this fragrance um, relevant and, and, and modern. This um, has this beautiful juniper, cypress, lavender thing going on with galbanum. Um, and then there's vetiver, there's cassia, there's lily of the valley, there's pine, there's oak moss, it's peppery, there's patchouli, uh, musk, and cedar. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, for, for a summer day, uh, Cheruti 1881, it's old school, but if you like vintage fragrances like me, you have to get your nose on, uh, Cheruti 1881. Who's the perfumer? Um, uh, Martin Grasse. Uh, very interesting. I think he's done some other things. What else has he done? He did Lapidus Parom. There you go. I mean, that's all you got to know. He did this and Lapidus Parom. Those were the two main hits. Some of the other stuff I don't know. Pierre Cardin, Blue Marine, Pour Louis. Doesn't sound interesting. Uh, Chavignon CC for men. I have no idea when that came out. Uh, Bonnier Woodman from 2002, never heard of it. Uh, but these two obviously are the hits, 1881 and Lapidus Porom. And this is a very complex fragrance for a cheapie. They've done a million flankers of these. I put 1881 Cheruti Bella Norte on my 
cheapy list, and that was by Olivier Cress, but this is the original, and it's very fresh. If you like Royal Water, that's probably the closest comparison because of the Juniper. The Juniper is very similar. There's also, there's more going on in this in Royal Water. Royal Water has this very high class, posh, but simple formula. Um, this is a little bit more complex, but the ingredients aren't as good. Uh, but it's also, you know, less than a tenth of the price of, the, of my Royal Water bottle. So, um, 1881 Chiruti, both of these, Action and Chiruti, would absolutely shine in the summer. Um, okay, now we're going to go to one that Fragrantica says, this is a Jean-Claude Elena. And I don't know if that's 100% true. If it is, this is a very interesting fragrance. Before he became the head perfumer of Hermes... This is called Rochas Globe. I've got two of these little 15 ml bottles. And Fragrantica says, excuse me, this is a leather fragrance. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. There's definitely leather in the base. Uh, but what's interesting is in the top, there's cumin, which is a Jean-Claude Elena staple. He loves cumin. He learned from Edmund Rudnitska, who did Eau de Hermes, uh, who, you know, um, basically all of Jean-Claude Elena's Hermeses are almost like taken off of, well, not even just the Hermeses, even Cartier's declaration gives a, you know, a nod to Eau de Hermes. And um, Rochas Globe does something very similar. I got these two 15 ml bottles for like $7 each or something. Very cheap uh, on Fragrance X. They were just getting rid of them. So I figured, what the hey? It's a Jean-Claude Elena. I mean, how bad could it be? And it's not bad. It's fantastic, actually. It's complex. It's, it is a little bit floral. That's what might put some men off. For a man's fragrance, there are a lot of different florals in this. There's Tagets. There's Lily of the, of the Valley, there's Geranium, Jasmine, Rose, and Carnation. This is right towards the beginning of the 90s, right when that Carnation note kind of started to just disappear. Um, there's Fur, Balsam Fur, and then the base is Leather, Sandalwood, Labdanum, Patchouli, Vetiver, Musk, and, and, and Cedar. I wouldn't call this a leather fragrance. You know, if you said, what type of fragrance is this? I wouldn't call it a leather fragrance. I don't know what I would call it, to be honest with you. Um, I'd call it a Jean-Claude Elena if he actually made this. Um, it, it does have a little bit of his DNA in it, especially that cumin. Um, it's very, very... If you've only smelled designers, modern designers, and you smell this, this is going to shock you a little bit um, because it's floral. It's dirty with the cumin, but it's also floral, but it's also resinous. There's also leather. It's a complex fragrance. Um, and if you like complex scents, it's definitely one to get your nose on. I believe it's discontinued as well. Um, so I think you can pick up 100 ml for 70 bucks, something like that. Uh, but these little 15 ml bottles just fit me perfectly because I can try them and wear them and not put up a bunch of money, you know, to uh, to get my nose on it. So um, Rochas Globe, something I never hear anyone talk about. Uh, and, you know, master perfumer, basically, Jean-Claude Elena. If you're going to go spend hundreds of dollars on his, you know, Hermes work uh, or his Frederick Mall work, you know, why wouldn't you? Check out something like, uh, like Rochas Globe. Okay, now we're going to go to a Moschino, and it's called Moschino Porom. The old bottles actually had two um, sprayers, one on both sides. Rich Mitch sent me a uh, picture once. I've never seen it before. Never actually seen it in real life. This is a good fragrance, but it has a problem for me. The problem is, is that it's trying to do a Bellamy thing for me. It feels like it's trying to do Bellamy. And nothing can do Bellamy because Bellamy is my favorite fragrance. You know, Bellamy and Heritage and stuff like that. Those are my favorites. Um, so it's trying to do a Bellamy. And it's, it's, it's very close, but I would rather just wear Bellamy. 
Um, I have three bottles of Bellamy now. I don't think I'll ever run out. But if I do, and I just can't find it or I won't pay, you know, what's Bellamy going to be in 20 years? I don't know. It's going to be $1,500 a bottle. I mean, it might be with the way perfume prices are going. Um, so I'll just wear this. I mean, this will get you in the ballpark. It'll get you in the vicinity. It's definitely a leather with amber. And it has this Italian aromatic top thing that, um, honestly, Trussardi Womo and um, Fendi Womo do better for me. I, if I'm going to wear an Italian leather, this is third place. This is behind Trussardi Womo, behind Fendi Womo. You know, I'd reach for those first. Um, it's still a good fragrance. It just, it has a, it has a problem with where I place it you know, rank-wise, where where I want to wear what I want to wear. I'd rather just wear Bellamy. Then I'd rather just wear Trussardi Womo or Fendi Womo. And then, but if I run out of all that, would I happily wear this? Sure. But every time I wear this, I just go, mm, I really wish I was wearing Bellamy, to be honest with you. It is a good, you know, if this came out today... <laughs> We would hail this as an amazing fragrance. Now, it's discontinued, and so prices are through the roof, but don't pay crazy prices for this. You can pay crazy prices for Bellamy, uh, and you can pay crazy prices for Fendi Womo, um, but don't don't pay crazy prices for, you know, Moschino um, Pour Homme. Uh, it is um, lavender, rosemary, clary sage, bergamot, uh, mid of carnation, caraway, orris, rose, and jasmine. Base of leather, oak moss, styrax, labdanum, benzoin, cedar, amber, tonka, and what Fragrantica says, coconut, which somebody told me you translate that coconut to castorium. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you're a leather lover like me and you can find this for cheap, might not be a bad idea to try to pick it up. This is a 100 ml bottle, I think. Yeah, this is 100 ml, made in Italy. Um, Euro Italia SRL. I don't really know the uh, Moschino breakdown, but um, either way, good, good, good perfume. Don't pay silly money for it. Um, you know, it just it, it when it stacks up to my other favorite leathers, it's not uh, it's it just can't win out in that race. Okay, now we're gonna get to some of the big boys. Not that these weren't the big boys, but the real big boys. This feeling Aguil is just beautiful. Okay, um, now we're gonna go to what you know, um, what many men who were maybe in their teens or 20s in 1990 would say is probably one of their favorite fragrances and you couldn't blame them for it it's the original chanel egoist now i don't have a cap because i bought this from someone and they lost the cap um but i think that this is a ah what's the batch code there you go I don't know what year this is, but it's a black atomizer. The older ones are silver, but even this black atomizer is good. Chanel doesn't make bad perfumes, um, but I think this is maybe like a 2020. I'm not sure, um, but um, this is basically coriander, mahogany wood, mandarin orange, and rosewood with carnation, rose, and cinnamon, and then amber, leather, sandalwood, tobacco, and vanilla. It's that sandalwood that everyone tends to focus on. And it is one of the most beautiful sandalwoods um, of all time. It is um, very creamy, very, you know, if you like if you like this fragrance, you have to check out Sandalwood Cologne from G.O.F. Trumper. It, um, it, it's in this, you know, in this DNA. They, they play in the same sandbox. Uh, but uh, Ego East... I actually like wearing this in summer, believe it or not. Um, I like Antaeus in the winter, and, and I like Ego East in the summer. That may really shock some people, because most people wear this in the winter. 
but I wear this in Trumper sandalwood in the uh, warmer weather. Works great for me. There is a leather note in the base, but it's not, this is not a leather fragrance. Um, not in the same way that Moschino Pour Homme is a leather fragrance. Um, very wearable, very, you know, the advertising campaign was very um, memorable, let's say, with the women opening up the doors of the you know, Italian style house and screaming, Ego East, Ego East. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you have to check that out. But um, Jacques Polge and Francois Demachy strike again. And, um, you know, they've created some, they created some absolute bangers at Chanel. You, you got to give it to them. No matter what you think of Francois Demachy, he was there for that. This is the, uh, this is the original EDT. Not the, not the, um, Platinum Ego East. I don't really care for Platinum Ego East, to be honest. Uh, but the original Ego East, I, I really like. Okay, now we're going to go to what Chris from Scentland has called his favorite fragrance of all time. That really says something. Um, and again, 1990 release from the house of Karl Lagerfeld. And this is Photo. So Lagerfeld designed this uh, little thing that you could pull. But mine broke, as you can see. So whatever, I'll take it out the old-fashioned way. This is a reformulated bottle from Unilever. Okay, so you, Parfums Lagerfeld, but distributed by Unilever. Even these reformulated bottles are going for silly money. Um, $250, $300, you know, insane stuff. I also have the vintage aftershave. You can see the difference in the quality. Look at the cap. You can see right there that the, it looks like a camera lens that you would adjust and the different font. Take a look at the different font. This is what the vintage font looks like. And this is what the more modern reformulated and now both of them are discontinued so it doesn't matter. I also bought these 5ml minis of the vintage and one day I will do a comparison video between the vintage formula and the more modern formula um, but for today we're just going to talk about it in the this year in perfume fragrances for 1990 this is um, a little bit sweet a little bit floral because of honey and, and, and uh, rose and jasmine and carnation and cyclamen um, it also has oak moss in the base with sandalwood and cedar. Uh, that sandalwood thing was very popular with Ego East. But this, what, what, what makes this fragrance unique is the use of aldehydes. Very, um, very elegant, uh, very uplifting aldehydes in the top with galbanum. They're a little bit green, a little bit citrus, a little bit lavender. Uh, with lemon and mandarin orange. For me, this is a spring and summer perfume. Um, Chris from Scentland said he likes to wear this in the fall. You know, for me, I just prefer it in the spring and summer. I'd rather wear Lagerfeld uh, cologne in the fall and winter. But um, it's it's very, um, very likable. If you're someone who likes compliments, you might really like this. For me, I don't really care. I mean, whatever. If I get a compliment, I get one. If I don't, it doesn't bother me one bit. Um, but um, if you can still find this, this is a 60 ml. I think I paid $60 for this a few years back. Now you'd pay hundreds of dollars for it. Um, but as a collector, you know, is it worth getting? Yes, I think it is. But try to find an older bottle. Don't get the Unilever one if you can. If you can find one of these with the older writing, I think this one is distributed by um, Parfums International. You can see the shorter note listing there. If you can find one of these older bottles, get it. You know, it's um, it's it's worth it. It's, it seems like it's worth it, but I'll do a comparison video for you guys so you know for sure one day. Okay, and now the one you've all been waiting for. Um, so I said there's a couple fragrances that, you know, people that I really trust say it's their favorite fragrance of all time. This is Chris from Scentland, and if you know what came out in the year 1990, this is Rich Mitch from the Rich Mitch channel. Um, the Duck. Balenciaga Pour Homme, and I completely 
understand why this fragrance of all the fragrances on this list this is probably my favorite um it is it is so stunning it's so excuse me it's so i'm still getting over my cold it's so unique you know um there, there, uh, I have gotten so many people asking me, is there anything like Balenciaga Pour Homme that uh, I can get that, um, um, you know, that I, that, that, that smells similar? And I have to say, no, there's literally nothing, there's literally nothing like Balenciaga Pour Homme. It is, um, it is unique in the sense, if you will, there, there is one fragrance that I own that in the dry down tends to get close to Balenciaga Pour Homme. Um, and that is a fragrance called um, Abussin Pour Homme. A-U-B-U-S-S-O-N. I don't know why I'm writing it for you guys. A-U-B-U-S-S-O-N. Abussin Pour Homme. The opening is not close. It's also much fresher. It doesn't get as dense as this. The word that uh, Thomas from Early Greek used, I have a tester bottle, by the way. And I think the juice is about, yeah, the juice is about right here on this 100 ml. So I got a ways to go with this bad boy. Um, but <clears throat> there's the notes. Where's the notes? Let me show it to you guys in English, I guess. There's the notes. There's the official note tree. <laughs> Excuse me. Of Balenciaga Pour Homme. Cylan cinnamon, which Euro Rose explained to me as a certain type of cinnamon from a certain part of the world. And this cinnamon does smell very unique. The cinnamon in this um, is is very unique. Also, I should mention, some people compare this to Jacques Bogart Witness. Witness is not as close as a Bussin Pour Homme is. A Bussin Pour Homme gets a little bit closer to this in the dry down. It's the closest thing to Balenciaga Pour Homme, but they're not the same. If you want Balenciaga Pour Homme, you have to buy Balenciaga Pour Homme. There's just nothing, there's nothing like this. And categorizing this is a problem. Um, Fragrantica says Amber Woody. I don't know about that. To me, this feels like Gerard Anthony, who, bravo Gerard Anthony, by the way, creating something like this. I mean, it, it, it all time great material here. Um, to me, this feels like a bit of a fougere with this amazing patchouli and cinnamon and oak moss and honey just kind of crushed into like you took a fougere backbone and just smashed these heavy notes into it um the cinnamon is outstanding the the cinnamon is so good in this i've never smelled cinnamon so i've never smelled such cinnamon in patchouli um there's also italian bergamot coriander thyme uh cypress <clears throat> which um if you like some of the old Halston fragrances, Halston Z14, um, or 1-12, one, one the Cypress in this is outstanding. O Oak Moss from Yugoslavia, Vanilla Bourbon, Amber, and Musk. God, it's so good. I just want to wear it right now. Uh, and we're talking about, I'm wearing a fragrance that is going for five to $900, and all I want to do is wear Balenciaga Pour Homme after smelling it. Um, it is, it is amazing. It, it really is. And you know what? I'm going to wear this in summer. I'm going to wear this in the Texas heat because I really think it's going to work. Um, this is my little baby bottle. It doesn't have the built-in sprayer. My little 30 ml, my little guy. I can just stick this in my back pocket, just spray away. And you know, this stuff lasts like 13 hours on my skin. Um, I wore this for my daughter's second birthday five months ago. And it is just scent memory. I haven't worn it since. And it's just like scent memory attached to that day. Um, Balenciaga Pour Homme. I mean, so 1990. Not not the fullest years in my collection. Um, but some real bangers here. You got to give it to it. All right, let's do the unboxing, shall we? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to grab a sip. Why unbox this. 
Oh, this cold really got me. Um, all right, so I have an idea of what this is. And um, I think it's a mini. I think it's a mini. But let's see. Got yeah, my unboxing knife. Okay. Let's see what we got here. I'll do a first impression of this. Thank you for your purchase. All right, let me open this bad boy without cutting my finger off. How they wrap the holy Jesus out of it. Look at the little baby bottle. This, this, man, I'm so glad this lid stayed on. It is not on tight. This is a 5ml mini bottle of Boss Spirit EDT. I had to buy this because I said Anuj from Enchante. Anuj, do you have Boss Spirit? No, it's long discontinued and a unicorn. I said, okay, I got to try it. Boss, Boss Spirit is um, sunshine in a bottle, according to um, according to Chris from Scentland. By the way, Boss Spirit is supposed to smell very similar to another Gerard Anthony fragrance that I absolutely love called Salvador by Salvador Dali. And um, that is a very uplifting fragrance that I, I will be um, I will be wearing this summer and winter. This is supposed to be very aromatic and herbal and spicy. Um, uh, there's a leather in the base. There is, um, Artemisia, Wormwood, Galbanum, and Mint. How's that for a four trifecta? Uh, a fourfecta in the opening. Artemisia, Wormwood, Galbanum, and Mint with Tarragon. Five heavy green notes, aldehydes, lavender, geranium, leather, sandalwood, patchouli, and amber. This came out in um, 1989. This could have made my 89 video if it was just a little bit sooner. But uh, Boss Spirit from the 80s. Okay, um, I will give this a... I'll, I'll decant this into a sprayer and wear this one day and give you guys a first impression. So I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing uh, and my 1990s video. If you have experience with some of these or if there's other scents from the 90s that I should try to get my nose on, please let me know. Um, I learn more from you than you do from me, as I've always said. And um, a like and a subscribe is always appreciated, but I'll never ask you for it because it's not really why I'm here. I'm just here to... Um, share my passion with you guys and if you get something out of it if even one person gets something out of it we'll count that a win so uh thanks for sharing some time with me today cheers and i'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video Bye bye